All right, Tesla's new navigation is here. And I say new navigation because they call it new maps. It's not necessarily new maps as far as I can tell. It's really just the turn by turn component uh, with some underlying changes to their trip planner in terms of how it finds its routes and the accuracy in which it chooses its routes. So let's break it down. Okay, so Tesla navigation, for those that don't know, is comprised of three components in the Tesla Model S and the Model X. Those three components are the turn by turn component, which appears in the instrument cluster on the left side, the center screen, which is the main map, which everything is controlled from and viewed in terms of the steps in the, in the trip, as well as the overall route. And then the trip planner component, which is Tesla's own sort of routing system for how it finds the best route for you. Model 3 is a combination of both the map and the turn by turn all in one screen. Uh, so it's showing you upcoming intersections, upcoming highways and interchanges and things like that when you navigate within the Model 3. The Model S and X, because they have two screens, one map in the center screen and the turn by turn navigation on the instrument cluster, they have to split that functionality up. And so what we have here with these new maps and new navigation effectively is an update to the turn by turn component. That's the that's the sort of the visual component of this update, the turn by turn component. And then we have an update to the underlying software that's used to generate the map and generate the routes for trip planner on the center screen. OK, so the idea is that for the center screen, we have different options. And the main option I think that matters to most is online routing. Online routing here, as you, as you can see, hopefully you can see is a new feature uh, within the navigation system that allows the system to leverage online data to be able to route based on traffic, based on maybe construction conditions or other road conditions that may materially impact your route. Uh, it also allows online routing to route to places faster. Okay, so that's the underlying component on the back end. I'm sure it also ties into new maps themselves, new map data meaning it gets the latest and greatest data from maybe Google or some other source of maps to make sure that the route that you're going is accurate and up to date. So that's the underlying component for this. The other part of this is the instrument cluster. I think that's the major component everyone's going to recognize and, and notice first and foremost. Uh, this component, again, is very reminiscent to what the Model 3 is doing, where they have a new interface, a new sort of rendering engine, if you will, for the turn-by-turn -turn navigation on the instrument cluster. It allows you to be able to very clearly see where you're going and very clearly see which turn or exit you're taking before you get there. That's been the, the, more, the bigger problem with the Tesla navigation in addition to its, uh, its accuracy or lack thereof. It's been the ability for you to frequently miss a turn or an exit because of the view that the car gives you and more importantly, the late notice that they give you in terms of taking that turn. OK, so this system uh, looks to resolve that by rendering your direction in the turn by turn navigation much clearer, highlighting upcoming cross streets, upcoming interchanges and interstates, as well as rotating the view to more of a bird's eye view when you come up to a turn that you're about to take or an exit that you're about to take. Add to that also better signage instead of indicating the lane that you're supposed to be in, it also indicates the exit you're supposed to be in, as well as the road that that exit leads to. So that's very, very clear. They're making it very, very clear and very easy for you not to miss a turn uh, and to be able to make every turn and be clear in where you're going. So I think that's very, very impactful. I think the voice is also different. The voice that they're using here is also different. Now take exit 150 on the right. In 500 feet, turn left onto Hoover Avenue. Now turn left onto Hoover Avenue. In one mile, take exit 142A on the right onto Interstate 78 East toward New Jersey Turnpike, Newark. I can't say that it's better than the old one. I, I think it's a little bit lower in terms of volume than the old one. I think it's even a little bit uh, nasally, if you will. Uh, but you can still hear what they're saying. And maybe it's just a preferential thing. And I'm, I'm not sure what the, the voice sounds like for different regions. Uh, but for the United States, it looks like uh, this is the voice that we're going to have, which is different than the old one. Uh, maybe not as loud as and, and the pronunciation is not as good as the old one, but it's still there. It's softer. It's maybe a little bit uh, smoother in terms of telling you the turns that are coming up where the other one could be a little bit more verbose. 
based on the volume level that you have it on. But again, that's basically it. It's not a it's not a major major update, in my opinion. Just what we've been testing so far. Uh, I think the major thing is just the turn by turn component, which is pretty big in itself. Just again, an upgrade for the over the previous Tesla system. So if we talk about ranking. Uh, how this navigation fares against all navigations, not just Tesla. I think it's a, it's, it's a step above the current Tesla navigation, but I think it's still below Google and Waze in terms of the level of features that are available. Uh, all the features that you had in the previous iteration of Tesla navigation are still there. Nothing has been added. No waypoints, no routing based on waypoints, no alternate routes, which is a, a very common request being able to navigate somewhere and be able to decide which route you'd like to take. There's none of that. There's no other uh, points of interest along the way, along your destination. So if you're going from you know New York to Virginia, you won't be able to specify uh, stop in New Jersey or stop in Philadelphia uh, and make a route based on that. So I think uh, Google and Waze are still superior to the Tesla maps at this present time. But from what I understand, this is the first round uh, of this update. And this update doesn't even come in a uh, standard software update. It comes actually in a, its own download itself. So um, if you're connected to Wi-Fi, make sure you're connected. You have a, a, a clear signal for your car in order to get the update. Um, you won't get a software update notice on your phone, but you will get a new software update uh, dialogue in the actual car uh, once you once the maps are loaded in your car. So it may take a little while. I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear if anyone else has tested out. They maybe found some new features that maybe I have not. But just so far, this is what I'm seeing. Uh, much easier to see your turn-by-turn -turn directions and understand where you're going based on that. You almost don't even need to use the center screen at this point, except for to see your, your estimated state of charge um, and the bigger picture of the trip to see if any traffic is coming up or anything has been rerouted. Um, in terms of speed, it looks to be about the same. I'm gonna test with the worst conditions, not the best conditions, which is one bar of LTE and for my test, I'm going to test how fast the uh, the, the the map system, the planner, the trip planner, is routing you from one place to the next, and then also how it can reroute you based on track, based on toll avoidance and another route.